What's going on, sports card hobby family? We've got a hodgepodge of different topics today on another edition of the Sports Card Dad. Thanks very much for joining me. We will be right back. Sports card hobby friends, tonight we have got Off Centered coming up with Flip and Steve and Neo, and we will hang out with you in the chat. Whatever topics you would like to discuss, we are here to chat about it. We are, what, only three weeks out from the National, so I am excited to talk National and just card shows, shops, all the stuff that is going on in the hobby. Huge thanks to today's video sponsor, ComC.com. 35 million plus cards in the database. Football, basketball, hockey, marble cards, all the non-sports entertainment goodness. You can grade your cards through ComC. You can run cards at auction on ComC. All sorts of different gadgets and gizmos on ComC.com. Check out my links down below to start your ComC journey today. We're first going to start with a fairly consistent story here. We've got an eBay seller, and there's this is one of a few that I've been keeping an eye on, and I've got sources out there that are sending me things almost on a daily basis every week, kind of shenanigans going on, this toll card world. And of course, they've got you know a zillion feedback and 99.9% .9 and all that. They've got some great cards. The one in particular, I'll throw it up on the screen. This is just one example, and it's a Cristiano Ronaldo patch auto goodness eminence expensive card. The only problem is, is it looks to be that this thing just keeps on getting shilled up. They don't get the price they want, relist it immediately, and they do it over and over and over until I guess some sucker catches that auction and it just gets caught in the middle of the shill, but inside that web, and they end up buying the card, I guess. But there's literally 30, 40 listings since last week that have been renewed and renewed and relist and relist and just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So just be careful out there when you're buying cards on eBay. There are certain accounts that I guess are just flying under the radar that eBay isn't really concerned about, or I don't really know what the story is. I, I also talked about, this is going back a few weeks, I don't know if they were hacked. Actually, I do think that's what happened. There was eBay accounts that were getting hacked, and then they throw up a bunch of fake listings, but for really expensive cards and collectibles. And then they would put in the eBay listing, which again, I think is just kind of a funny way that they're trying to scam. Basically in the listing, hey, reach out to us directly on WhatsApp or whatever, or, or PayPal us this, or reach out on this email. And of course, eBay catches those because they're basically trying to circumvent eBay to scam you directly. It's just weird. It's such a weird thing. But anyway, I know that eBay is trying to do their best as far as keeping some of these scammers off. But but this relisting thing and shilling and relisting thing, I don't I don't see how that doesn't pop up on their radar at some point. But anyway, the new gem rate grading data came out, and I'm not going to make a huge big fuss about it because to be honest with you, not much changed. The numbers do show that you know each company's down about 10 to 15 percent on average. BGS and CGC grading an all-time low for sports cards. I think CGC is like 15,000. BGS back in is like 20,000 cards, which is absolutely insane just how low that, that that is for the sports card side. At least CGC grading a lot of non-sports Pokemon type stuff, TCG cards. But essentially what Ryan at Gemrate said was probably the reason for this in part was is that in the month of June, there was three less business days than there was in May. And three business days of these companies, you might think, like, oh, it's only three days. I mean, at PSA, they're grading 50, 60, 70,000 cards a day. That's 150 to 200,000 cards in three business days. So, yeah, basically, the difference in the numbers is probably mostly that. The thing that's consistent is grading remains strong. And all these companies have grading specials. PSA just came out with a vintage grading special. SGC's got grading specials that are going on for the next week or two, a couple of different specials. They've got the Top Series 2 special going on right now, as well as the basketball special that goes through the middle of this month. So take advantage, take advantage. And then, of course, we've got the Caitlin Clark drama. I think this is really funny. The league trying so hard to balance it all out and keep all the vets happy and keep all of these folks happy. And the good thing that Caitlin Clark keeps doing is she just keeps showing up and just making it happen. She's not scoring 30 a game, which finally, Coach Sides has finally, someone got in her ear and said, hey, look, I know that you're trying to work the ball around. I understand that you want every single player to score 10 points or whatever the goal is, but 
Caitlin Clark needs more touches. And I think I saw some sort of an interview where Sides, Coach Sides, says that she needs to take a minimum of 15 shots a game and be more aggressive shooting the ball. The other part of this issue for her is Caitlin Clark happens to be the best passer on the team. And what happens is, is okay, Caitlin Clark's going to be aggressive and she's going to shoot. And then guess what happens? She gets doubled. Somebody else is open. And Caitlin Clark, I've, I've watched all the WNBA highlights, all the different teams. She is one of the best passers in the entire WNBA as a rookie. I think it's hilarious how a lot of people talk about all oh, the turnovers. Caitlin Clark and all these turnovers that, that she's given up. Her teammates can't catch the ball. Caitlin Clark will throw some wicked pass down court that's a layup, and they'll drop the ball or they can't finish or whatever. And it's like, guys, I mean, if you can't make the basket, just Dribble around, dribble it out, give it back to Caitlin so she can pop up for a three or she can find Boston down beneath for, for an easy basket. I mean, the team is just not very good. The Fever are not good at all. So she's trying to say all the right things as a rookie. The coach has been trying to decide. She's halfway through the season now. Do I give the reins to Clark or do I keep on trying to make the vets on the team happy and the rest of the team happy? The coach needs to take charge and say, like I've been saying since day one, Caitlin Clark runs this team. I know she's a rookie, but the offense is going to run through Caitlin Clark and everything's going to open up for everybody else because of that fact. The fact that she can hit a logo three means that the defense has to cheat up. They have to get someone out and it's going to spread the floor and other people are going to be open. And like I said, one of the better passers in the WNBA is Clark. She's already shown that in the very short amount of time that she's been playing. And I've watched the Las Vegas Aces, and I've watched the, the Liberty and these other great teams. And Clark on one of those teams would be winning a title every single year. And that's probably what's going to happen eventually. They're going to put players around her on the fever, or she's going to go to a different team where it's just a better overall team that is built for her showtime offense. I mean, she wants to push the ball. She wants tempo. She wants to move the ball up court, but her teammates can't catch a ball down court. I mean, her teammates can't run. You know, they're trying to set up kind of a half-court offense, which is fine, and Caitlin Clark can do the half-court offense too, but she needs different pieces around her. They need an enforcer. They need a Draymond Green on defense. They need a lady that is just going to be pissed, wakes up angry every day, and is going to go down and defend her teammates, especially Caitlin Clark. They need enforcers, one or two of them. Doesn't matter if they can shoot. They just need to be able to rebound, play defense, and stand up for their teammates. That's simple. Honestly, just have a couple of scores on the team and then just have defensive players, rebounders. I saw something too about Angel Reese still in front of Caitlin Clark for Rookie of the Year or some sort of garbage because she has 10 straight double-doubles. You know, she plays down low, so she has to get 10 points and 10 boards. Wow, that sounds really hard. Caitlin Clark averages like seven or eight boards a game, seven or eight assists a game, and 15, 16, 17 points a game. She almost averages a triple-double. Almost. But she has been handcuffed all season so far. So, But we'll see. The Fever have been on a winning streak. She's been playing really well. I think her coach is starting to figure it out, or people are just yelling in the coach's ear like, hey, figure it out. I think it's starting to happen. All right, my friends, we had a little hodgepodge, a few different items that we sprinkled in today's video. If you are available tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, Off Centered will be on me, Steve, and Neo will be going over the latest, greatest hobby news topics and getting ready for the National Card Show. Make sure to join up. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.